It was a promise made to Congress in the wake of the Abu Ghraib abuse scandal. I'm seeking a way to provide appropriate compensation to those detainees who suffered such grievous and brutal abuse and cruelty at the hands of a few members of the U.S. military. It's the right thing to do. But six years later, the Pentagon cannot document a single payment to any detainee. We have a serious issue with uh, Iraqi detainees having not received any form of compensation or redress. And in that redress, I would also include things like psychological support for the abuse that they suffered. The Army says it's possible the former detainees were paid informally through Iraqi leaders, but it can't verify whether any money changed hands. The former detainees' hopes may rest with the Supreme Court. Lawyers for more than 250 of them want the high court involved in their suit, alleging civilian contractors conspired with soldiers to abuse the prisoners. Federal law protects the government from being liable, so the fundamental legal issue is, can defense contractors working side by side with military jailers be sued for claims from a war zone? The group representing the detainees says the high court faces a very simple question when it looks at the case this week. The Supreme Court has before it a petition that really asks a very simple question, whether or not torture can be carried out in the name of the United States. There have been conflicting court rulings on whether American law protects contractors as well as the government from being sued. Analysts, though, say the odds the Supreme Court will step into the Abu Ghraib cases anytime soon appear slim. Sagar Magani, The Associated Press, Washington.